we are going to showcase five of our uh, hardware startups here. I just want to give you a quick idea about how do things uh, think this industrial IoT as a holistic solution. So for example, if you, if you put sensors in everything, you are making things smart. But does it not make business? No. So you have to think very holistically. To just give you an example, Honda is known for two great industries. As mentioned by the earlier speaker, pumps. The next is wet grinders. And they are losing market share. Why? We haven't made them. We haven't made holistic thinking about both making smart and also making the business plan. Okay? Just to give you a quick example, traditionally pumps are sold at 20,000 rupees to a farmer who borrows money to buy it. Okay? Why can't you sell the pumps at 5,000 rupees? Isn't that possible? No. The business will lose money. Okay? So, what do you do? You put sensors. You measure current. You measure voltage. You measure how much water that's pumped out of the pump. And you tell the farmer, each liter pay me 50 paise. Wouldn't the, are, you, are you actually telling the farmer to use the water conservatively? And there you go. There you crack the business model. If you sold the pump for 25,000 rupees, it's one-off sales. But you sell pump as a service, you're making rattling business. You're telling the business, look, how much water you pump? You pay me every, every, every month, you pay me some money. And what's the best thing out of it? Every data you collect from the sensors goes to the cloud. And what do you do? You can run some diagnostics. OK, my point is plain. Why is that? Maybe the coil is overheating. Maybe it's dry run. Doing a dry run. You can analyze from from your web browser. Think of this. You have a Google Maps, and every point you see is the pump, where people bought from you. And you have a GPS, and you have put GPRS in it, and it sends data to your cloud platform. Just by clicking the button as a CEO, you can say, oh, this pump in Bangalore is running at this speed, and it's pumping out this much volume of water. So OK, the pump is functioning well. OK, this is one business model that takes care of you're rethinking the whole business as itself, not just putting sensors. Second, wet grinder industry. Okay? If you look at it, traditionally wet grinders are sold, but can you make as a service? You can put sensor and actually measure the wear and tear of how much revolution it has done. Okay? Then one day, one nice morning, you'll get a call from, from the service engineer be saying that, sir, your gear is going to fail, can I come and replace it? It will happen. And you charge that charge for the service to the customer so you can make recurring business. So all this IoT value not only the businesses but also the consumers. Sell service as a part of your business plan, that's what IoT enables. Okay? With that, I think most of the hardware startups that's going to uh, showcase here are already cracked that, not just the IoT part of it but also the whole holistic uh, part of the business model as well. With that, I'll start with the first hardware startup. Uh, that's we are next. I request Raju to come and deliver. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Raju. I represent a uh, startup called We are next. And we are uh, uh, startup in uh, Post Explorator. And um, uh, <coughs> uh, we are a company who build uh, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality products. Uh, so, uh, every day we used to get advertisements, we get uh, uh, in different channels, uh, TV advertisements, uh, paper billboards and uh, paper ads, uh, even in our Facebook, uh, Google ads, everything. And uh, there are too, too much of ads to diagnose and uh, impress the customer. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Uh, there, are, there are too many, too many ads targeted at uh, one single customer. Okay. And uh, then we are making an uh, impressive uh, advertisement for the customer. That's a big question mark. That's why uh, that's why we have a solution in terms of uh, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality. And we make your business stand unique uh, in the cloud. And uh, the technology that we are developing will help you or help your product um, uh, reach the crowd just by the uh, uh, spread of word. And also, it will help you uh, to drive sales. Uh, just, just to give you a, an intro about what is uh, virtual reality is all about. Virtual reality um, uh, is, is a uh, natural thing which was uh, 
the all of the way back in um, uh, 70s and 80s, uh, and which was uh, only used by government agencies. But nowadays it is available uh, in the hands of uh, consumers in the form of uh, head mounted displays. And what this enables for the customer is to see uh, your product um, as it is, as you see it in the real world. And we see our uh, real world using our five senses, eyes, ears, nose, and different things. And the head mounted displays available uh, today uh, kind of fake the eyes and ears. Uh, which will uh, transport you into a virtual world, world where you can cook up your environment. Okay, you can create a ideal scenario to present your product, where, wherein uh, the customer can explore your product personally, and he can be there and uh, he can actually be there, see it and feel it. That's that's a pressure. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this because uh, this thing cannot be explained in words. We have set up a demo space uh, in the mini lab, and uh, I would request uh, whoever is interested can drop, drop in and uh, have a first hand experience on uh, virtual reality. Um, then, <coughs> augmented reality. Augmented reality is a thing where uh, uh, you superimpose your product and, uh, uh, and augment the real world. Say, for example, you have a machinery and you want uh, how um, the plant will look like after installing your machinery, you can actually augment it with uh, augmented reality uh, solutions. And we have uh, that uh, demo as well for that uh, in our demo, uh, demo place. And uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are developers of uh, holographic displays as well. Holographic displays is a hard thing. Holographic displays are going to do what uh, uh, the traditional neon displays and uh, TV displays used to do for the businesses in uh, 60s, uh, 60s and the 70s. Okay, this is a uh, crowdfunding thing where uh, you can uh, augment your product with anima uh, animations around, the, um, uh, explaining about your product, uniqueness of your product, and uh, things like that. And recently, this uh, holographic display. Uh, went to be a mass market when uh, Moriji used it. I think uh, most of uh, you might be aware of it. Uh, Moriji presented himself in a 3D hologram uh, to make his uh, 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 electoral uh, campaign. And we have a holographic di uh, display uh, demo here at our uh, demo space. So I uh, invite every one of you to have a look at it. Uh, of course, uh, uh, these are the advantages of uh, using VR uh, and AR. I'm not going to run through it. So uh, um, I, I, uh, uh, the ones who are interested, I can uh, show it in uh, in person rather than explaining it in words. So this is uh, this is how it can um, uh, uh, be used. Um, you can showcase uh, your product in exhibitions, not necessarily to carry your product physically. There are there are products which cannot be carried to every other exhibition. Say for example, a JCB machine which is built. And you can't carry it around for all the exhibitions wherever you go. So for that, we have a solution where you can just give us the 3D model of it and we will port it to the visual reality and you just need to carry a head mounted display wherever you go and present it to the customer to have a uh, um, uh, have an experience of your uh, uh, product. And also the showcases. Uh, showcases is a very unique thing uh, which can uh, actually uh, convert your onlookers into customers. Uh, as you know, a place like Cross Cut Road, there are, uh, there are too many businesses running parallelly, and holographic display can actually uh, be a crowdfunding force which can bring the onlookers to your shop. Converting that uh, to a customer is, of course, is in your hands. So, with that, I just uh, finish my. <laughs>
whether it is water or electricity, you see, manage it through concept of microgrid, where in which it is independent of the main grid. So these houses or entities are actually monitored at individual points and controlled. Water and energy uh, are controlled at individual points by actually measuring the amount of water or energy going to individual places. And this data is actually, uh, if it, right now it is not monitored in many cases. Like for example, some of you might be staying in an apartment, uh, perhaps in Bangalore, the, uh, the water bill is given equal, whether a person, in neighbors get same amount of water bill, whether a person uh, is a family of two or eight gets same amount of water bill. And a neighbor might be paying for a, a person's, uh, the neighbor's uh, water leakage. So we solve that problem by actually monitoring the water uh, going to individual houses and also at the generation side, like for example at the borewell site, you know whether there is water there or not at the borewell site and you actually make sure the pump is switched on only when there is water and then you appropriately uh, pump it to the uh, this one, what is the sum and then you put it to the uh, tank. So uh, these water and energy are interconnected. One million liter, one million of liter pumping into one meter cost uh, around one unit, two, two units of electricity. So you conserve water, you also conserve energy. Likewise, energy can come from various sources. Like for example, solar energy uh, in a localized place, you want to uh, distribute it into these places. You want to know how much energy is going to individual the house. In that case, you need to have a monitor, and, uh, and you need to know how much is going to individual and you uh, kind of. Uh, do appropriate management. If somebody is consuming more energy, then that person should be should be cut off, like like a mobile phone. So uh, solar energy is limited amount of energy you generate at that location. So you need that specific uh, feature. So this is the concept of microgrid. So there are various problems, challenges, problem statement. The energy side uh, management, whether the energy is properly uh, uh, getting properly coming or not. Like there could be dust on the panel, there could be various other uh, issues in the panel. The batteries might be depumped. And in terms of water, uh, as I told you, there could be uh, dry run, uh, there's no water at all in the pump. So, and in terms of revenue collection, 20% of operation management, uh, operation management cost is around 20% of the overall investment in any such setup. So this 20% uh, is where the business opportunity is. So we saw these problems in terms of like uh, overloading of some load at a, a location. And in fact, even in terms of water <coughs> management, we have done a system where we measure the soil moisture and appropriately pump. In fact, we presented at the University of California at Berkeley, the whole concept, and we have uh, implemented such system in various places, including uh, one of the Tata's companies also, and in we are working on this energy management. So these are our interface, uh, these are the product uh, we were able to show our uh, kind of list of this uh, system in our uh, in the product showcase, where we interconnect the module with the internet. But it's instant use in hardware product, or software product, or mix, or device, what is it? Yes. Uh, so basically, uh, the hardware is connected to the uh, system. You device, you design your devices. Yes. You make your own devices. Yes. Right. Software on top of that, and for the road. Yes. So we partner with uh, electrical uh, uh, like uh, electrical uh, uh, installers and the plumbers and these companies, and we show them how to use our product, and they do the system. But we talk to the client and partner with our uh, these partners, and they install the system for us using our products. Right now we are in the uh, we are finished the pre POC stage, and we are actually doing it for clients right now. So, <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. Huh? No, I'm not. I'm from Bangalore. I actually started this company with my problem friend same from. <laughs> so, so uh, the, this is a feature which basically solves these problem statements. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, basically, there's wireless architecture which uh, actually connects to the main hub and it actually connects to the uh, supervisory control. There's a com computer that connects to the uh, internet and I, I really didn't start this as an IoT product, but it came out as the thing IoT is a solution. So I didn't know the concept of IoT four, year, four or five years back, but it, I realized that's a solution to all this thing. That's how, uh, how we have developed the product. So uh, as I told you, existing is a very conventional way of doing things. Wherein which 
the you have your electricity meter at your house. There is no communication. In fact, thanks to my experience at G, where I work for Australian Market for this communication of meters, how we can manage it. So uh, likewise, flow meters which we buy from the market and integrate it. And uh, this this would make sure that you can get uh, based on the kind of uh, solution you want, whether it's SMS based or web based or mobile app. So uh, I think I can. I've already mentioned the solution. So uh, thank you. You have won awards, and I am glad that the byproduct of our work has been pretty uh, thankful to us. Yeah, we also presented various. We can actually discuss potential customers. So we are uh, pretty confident we can at least try 10 percent of these people in the next one. Thank you very much. We are trying to solve this, uh, you know, using our connected uh, processor. This is what we do. Uh, this is our product. Uh, this is the connected processor that I'm talking about. Uh, this is IQ E11, which is our uh, flagship product. Now, this uh, processor, uh, which has inherent uh, communication facilities, getting retrofitted into any product that you give us. Uh, you talked about a pump or a bed grinder. It could be uh, any machine uh, on a shop floor. I have a few examples that I can uh, share. It works. Uh, <coughs> so once it gets retrofitted, it works with a lot of sensors, actuators, controllers. You know, takes data from these, all the machine parameters like humidity, temperature, vibration, motion, you name it, anything, and then securely transmits over cloud, <coughs> over HTTPS to the uh, cloud. We are on uh, Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure. That's where all the uh, data processing uh, happens. And then we give the data to our customers as uh, you know RESTful APIs. Uh, it's a very simple uh, architecture. Uh, just to set the context, in the, in the complete IoT value chain, you have the devices and the machines in the first stage, then the data that comes out from these machines in the second, and then the presentation layer on where you want the data to go. Right? So iBot operates only in the first stage. We would want to restrict ourselves to that. We just want to get data from any machine that is given to us, uh, you know, and then you know, give it to our customers so that they can build their own applications, they can do the analysis and you know, uh, use for their business. So any, any mechanical input can throw data to you and you capture it and the Exactly, exactly. Will, excuse me, will this, use, uh, will, will this can be fitable on the conversion or Yeah. Input can be when you say conventional machines, there are parameters, for example, vibration, temperature, yeah, exactly. See, right? Yeah, I have normal such as bending. Yeah. So in this machine, I want to uh, take the vibration on the track. Okay. This, this we can do this. Yeah, we can do this. We can do a lot more. We can, you know, uh, you know allow you to measure power consumption. Sensors are outside. No sensors are outside. This goes on a base board. This goes on a base board. For example, at E level, this has a micro engine. This has capabilities. So please go and add such as well, or you let me give you a complete device. So please, I highly there will be you know somebody in between, you know, you as a vendor, you know, provider of this technology, and the end customer. So you need somebody in between who can actually. You know, uh, design the PCB and no, you, do that you do that. We do that as well. So we take the complexity out of an IoT deployment. You don't have to worry about communication. You know about you know the strict KYC norms. You know we use end to end SIMs, right? So you know somebody talk about Vodafone. We partner with Vodafone. We partner with Airtel, uh, SimCom, for example. This can work globally. 
uh, with any same insight, it's got a same slot. This has a GPS, GPRS, it can communicate, it's got a crypto engine. So any data hitting from the sensors and the controller or the actuator, uh, you know, actuator. Answer the previous question. You say the sensor is required. How will the sensor be like So we, we give you an, the complete solution. So let's say you want to measure, you know, you said vibration or the temperature of the, uh, you know, of the bearing inside, for example, yeah. or the load that it is, uh, you know, taking from the grid, yeah. right? We put sensors and then package and then give you one complete device, okay. so that you can retrofit in your, uh, you know, grinders. Okay. It could work with your, you know, motors as well. One of our customers is Viva Group. Uh, you know, they make, you must be, you must have heard about Viva Group. We work with them. Uh, I can show you the uh, the details of what we do. So a few, you know, very interesting examples. Uh, you know, we were talking about companies changing their complete revenue models. This is a this is the best example that I can give you. Uh, uh, Eureka Forbes uh, has a very large, uh, you know, water purifier business. Everybody knows. So this brand of water purifier is, is called uh, uh, RO paper use, right? The RO prepaid, sorry, RO prepaid. So instead of buying a water purifier. Eureka Forbes actually gives that to you free. It, you know, there's, there's a deposit, uh, you know, anyways. But you know, it's not like buying a, you know, water purifier. So you just, you know, the, they come and deliver the uh, water purifier, and then you have an app. The consumer gets an app. He charges for the number of liters he uh, he buys. So what you're actually doing <coughs> is buying the outcome. You want purified water and not a purifier at your house. So I pay 100 rupees, let's say for 50 liters of water. That will run for 50 liters. There will be a buffer for 5 liters, and then you know the machine stops. That's on the consumer side. The consumer is only paying for what he uses. But from Eureka Forbes side, they know the all the internals of you know this water purifier. Is it dispensing the current the correct ml of water per minute? Is it uh, you know are the candles uh, you know working properly? Is the purification system working uh, properly? Where starting from where the uh, water purifier is? Who is the customer? You can you can attach you know all the sales data to the uh, location data and can do this. We work with Godrej Vending again. You know works uh, very similar an app for the consumer where you can you know track you know how much tea, coffee, or soup is being consumed, and then uh, you know Godrej can actually look at you know the machine and do remote monitoring and remote uh, remote service as well. In fact, the Godrej machine has a capability to raise a service ticket on its own. We work with Luminous. This product has gone live. Uh, this was launched in uh, the month of January. Uh, soft launch to about 100 distributors. Again, you know the consumer gets to know what's the load on the inverter. You know how much money have I saved. But you know on the business side, Luminous gets to remotely uh, monitor and operate. You know and do preventive maintenance on the machine. So all these are your examples. Yeah, they are all customers. Yeah. So Greaves uh, is another customer. We take out 88 parameters out of a single diesel generator. So they already have some electronics inside. So we build uh, a, a custom base board for them using our, uh, you know, our, our connected processor and you know from the platform and uh, diesel generator. Again, you know, an app for the consumer as well as remote monitoring and preventive maintenance ability for diesel generator. Yeah. So these are uh, you know some of our uh, you know customers. Somebody talked about agriculture here. Nature Sweet is our customer in uh, Mexico. Uh, Nature Sweet is uh, produce, Nature Sweet produces tomatoes, right? So they have 600 hectares of uh, greenhouses. So we've given a solution where they monitor ambient temperature, soil temperature. Their entire grid irrigation system is connected using uh, iBot. So sitting in an office, I can control. I can't control the temperature, but you can, you know, you know, monitor and track, you know, how your tomatoes are coming out, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the uh, cycle. So, this point what you're saying, Karthik, is exactly the same globally. This company for Bigger, right? They're exactly, they made me recently that I have this challenge. My market is shrinking. How do we really start a community in India? They're talking to us, how do we create a startup <coughs> ecosystem for them? And this gentleman, in any case, is supplying that we didn't know. And we will discover we from the same person. I was suggesting this startup was doing it. So, who is it? I said, he. And I said, this is looking for enterprise, looking for who is it, is a mayor, and just for discovery, they can do it. Capacity exists in the country. So, Wildcraft, we all know Wildcraft, we all, I'm sure many of you know, many of us in this room carry back. We do a connected bag for them, especially for child and women's safety. So, it comes with a you know, small device uh, you know, inside the bag. You know, apart from location, you can you know, do geofencing, you can you know, call into the bag. For example, if you're. You know, 
child going to a school, for example, you want to you know listen to the ambient noise, you can actually call into the band and see whether he's in a classroom or he's in the bus or he's playing outside. <laughs> right? So, okay. so, so all the features are built in, all, all uh, you know, using uh, the iPod connected processor. Uh, thanks, Adesh. Thanks. thanks. Okay, this is like, yeah, you can just run through it. 
So basically it captures the video as and when uh, and tells whether the person is authorized or unauthorized and this is basically uh, done using uh, sensors and uh, Raspberry Pis and you can get all the information instantaneously, probably in a factory of more than 50 or how it would really work well. Uh, not just face alone. It, this is actually integrated to a computing software where the timing and timeout are captured and you get all your ESA, PF, all whatever reports you need. These are the basic key components in this system. Yeah, yeah he, uh, early warning system in a factory. Yeah, it was two and a half minutes is what uh, I could see in the video. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 Factory hard factory, there are typically there are different factory flows. And then there's a central emergency response team. Now if there is a fire or any incident happening at a particular factory flow, because there are more people you know solving the factory, they may not have time to go to central. So what we have there is a machine and then we have sensor also in the same facility. So if any you know, incident is detected that like, okay there can be possibility of fire or any other situation which you can think of, it not only shuts down the machinery locally, it also sends the remote trigger to the alarm in the central station. So if you notice there the red and orange thing is going, so that is at the central ERT team, you will get an alarm, you can send people there. You also have facilities to control all equipment in the factory from the system. Targeted when you attack the same. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Today's businesses have many uncertainties, and they shouldn't impact your business. Are your food products being wasted? Have your medical products become increasingly non-compliant? Is it hard to monitor temperature from your reaper trucks? Or the location of your leased equipment? Are your operational costs increasing and you do not know why? If only you can find data-backed reasons to all these problems. With Nimble Wireless, you can. With powerful sensors and cloud applications, Nimble monitors and collects real-time data 24-7 from your assets and provides you with alerts, trends, and historical data on the go. Eliminate the possibility of cold chain wastage with temperature excursion alerts. Ensure compliance of medical supplies and reduce wastage from improper storage of temperature sensitive vaccines. Enjoy relatively risk free business by geofencing your leased assets. Ensure optimal functionality of your windmills and monitor the amount of power generated in real time. Using nimble wireless solutions, clients have eliminated cold chain wastage by 80%, reduced wastage of vaccines by 50%, minimized the risk of losing assets by 90%, and reduced operational costs of windmills by 35%. Nimble Wireless creates endless possibilities by monitoring remote assets critical to business. Compliance and efficiency are only a few sensors away. Nimble Wireless, giving senses to your assets. So, this device has 12 different sensors. I think 